My four-year-old daughter is singing along with the radio on our way to her checkup. She asks me, what is the doctor going to do? Because I am a teacher, I prepare for the exam. We role play the questions. Do you brush your teeth? I ask. Mom, you know I brush my teeth, she says. What do you eat? I ask. Mac and cheese, chocolate, popcorn, lollipops, <laughs> she answers truthfully. I remind her that she eats more than that, and doesn't mommy put lots of fruit in your lunch and veggies in your dinner? Oh, that gets a huge laugh. What do you like to do? She perks up. Watch movies. <laughs> I refrain from suggesting she not talk about how much TV she really watches. What comes out in the wash comes out, and I remind myself that more than one person said, it's okay unless it's like four straight hours, which maybe it has sometimes. The doctor's appointment. It's like my report card, but from the most non-judgmental people in the medical profession. It was the husband-wife pediatric team that talked me down off the ledge when I brought in my 18-month-old middle child who had no issue save for a mother that felt like she was drowning from sleep deprivation. It was my kid's doctor who assured me that I wasn't the first person to feel completely inept at parenting. And it was his wife, the nurse, who told me that my husband's and my job's during the first few years of parenting three kids were primarily keeping them fed, clean, and happy. Yet I can't help but crave some kind of approval. I want someone to tell me I'm doing this right because three kids in, I don't feel at all like I've got this mom thing down yet. How long do I need to wait until I know I've either done them right or completely messed them up? Her temperature, weight, height, vision, all fine. Then the nurse's questions begin. Do you know your colors, she asks. Yes, my sweet daughter answers. Everyone except for green. <laughs> How about your numbers? Do you know your numbers? My daughter counts up to 20, deliberately skipping 15 because she knows that drives me crazy. Do you brush your teeth? Yes, she says proudly, once a day. <laughs> twice, I tell her, twice a day. Um, no, mom, sometimes you let us stay up late watching TV and then we fall asleep <laughs> and don't brush our teeth. She looks at me for a sign of recognition of this truth and now I'm feeling sweaty around the temples. <laughs> what do you eat, the nurse asks. What are your favorite foods? Now I watch my daughter's wheels spin in her blonde head. She sits straight up. My favorite foods, she's turning it on now, are carrots and broccoli. <laughs> Yum, I love broccoli. My girl looks at me for approval. Clearly, I've subliminally persuaded her to tell them what they want to hear. The nurse looks at me askance. I shake my head that, no, that's not quite the case. Broccoli and last night's dinner had all the drama of a Real Housewives reality show. The nurse inspects her little body. I am not sure how she looks it over and manages to not want to bite all the parts I want to bite and kiss and nuzzle. Aren't you going to check my eyes and nose? She offers her head forward for inspection. The nurse tickles her cheek and my daughter laughs furtively, knowing that she can turn on her cute. And now we're both seeking approval and I've learned more about my parenting in this moment than maybe ever before. I resolve to teach my daughter to never rely on external validation, to be self-assured, to hell with what everybody thinks of her, to be herself, 
yes, I'll teach her this by God. Right after this appointment. <laughs> Does she drink milk? The dreaded question. My kid gave up milk this year in all its forms. The smells of cheese and yogurt and cottage cheese make her run out of the kitchen, holding her nose like a clothespin. In fact, she can smell an open container of Greek yogurt from all the way up in her bedroom and refuse to come downstairs until not one trace remains. I explain to the nurse that we're trying soy milk, coconut milk, almond milk, and rice milk, my girl chimes in. The nurse quietly offers alternatives. We move on to how to disguise vegetables into everyday meals. But I know my kid is on to me, so I make the conversation overt. I suggest that I make her a spinach ice cream smoothie. What color would that be? The nurse asks, smiling. Pistachio, says my daughter. <laughs> and what color is pistachio? She smiles and rolls her eyes to the ceiling. See, she says, I told you I don't know green. <laughs> the visit is nearly over when the nurse asks my daughter what she's learning. Spanish. She doesn't mention that it's from Dora the Explorer and vintage Sesame Street at videos. <laughs> Swimming, dance, she lists on her little fingers. M is for Mexico and mommy. She tries to enunciate, set the scope. The nurse scribbles some notes and mutes her amusement so as not to invite antics. The visit is done. She invites my daughter to get dressed and my daughter falls apart falls apart, tears all over the place. Where's my treat? She explodes. You said I could have a treat if I got a shot. I remind her that she got her flu shot yesterday and that she did in fact get a lollipop. But now she is naked and crying. And it's all my problem because the nurse politely starts to make her way out from the room wishing us a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I also feel exposed. This was my daughter's checkup, but did I pass? Am I doing this right? Am I doing anything right? If I don't need approval, I just need some reassurance. Anything will do. The intuitive nurse, this woman who has also raised three children and tended to the physical and emotional needs of hundreds others, pauses, gives me a knowing smile and a wink on the way out. I exhale. My daughter's sobs turn to wails and all I can do is put her back on the exam table and nuzzle her back to laughing. And though giving two more chances to say goodbye, to the gracious nurse on our way out. She doesn't, but instead flashes a toothy smile and licks the glass door. <laughs>